Yes, sir. My name is uh, N. Ravishekar or uh, Sridhar Reddy, sir. I'm principal of uh, B.E.D. College. Uh, but I studied uh, different religions, sir, uh, including Bible and Quran, Hadith, and all these things. And uh, I've been trying to know truth. And I learned namaz, and I was doing. Sir, in one of the Hadiths, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asks a Syrian not to divulge his uh, faith and say, La ilaha illallah. The times were such. But nowadays, because it is the Darul Harab uh, water disease, uh, our psychological implications and also social implications and other things are passed. Is there any concession uh, for uh, people who want to follow uh, Islam? And also, uh, some of the things given by Tavo Physics by Fidget Capra and Stephen Hawking's History of Time, uh, there are so many galaxies and other things. And we cannot uh, brush aside some of the concepts like Anal Haq or Aham Brahmasmi. Doing five times namaz, or even thousand, can we in our uh, rest time follow this uh, concept of anal haq? And uh, as some of the people who so Please uh, pose one question at a time. We have lack of time. I'll answer your question. The other people waking on the microphone. The brother asked a question that he knows of a hadith that Prophet told a Syrian not to change his faith. Not to? Not to say, uh, la ilaha ila allowed in the bazaar. He was beaten. The brother has said that Prophet Muhammad said, don't say la ilaha ila la loudly in the bazaar. He was beaten. I don't know which hadith you are quoting in context. There's a hadith which says that don't say Allah Akbar loudly. Not la ilaha ila la. That is a hadith because in the war, when they're hiding and the enemy is coming, don't say Allah Akbar loudly. Because that means you'll be exposed. Not in the bazaar, in the battlefield. The other hadith says, say loudly, so that it will encourage the other soldiers. So it depends upon the situation. He does one of the person in the battlefield, say Allah Akbar. It gives the jasbah, the passion, the love. But certain times, when you're hiding, if you say loudly, then you'll be exposed. So depending upon different situations, different things are there. Your main question was, that can we follow Islam and other things? like Socrates or some other people or from other scientists, including Anwar Haq. As far as following anything else with Islam, if it doesn't go against the Quran and the Sai Hadith, no problem. If it matches with the Quran and Sai Hadith, it should be followed. If anything else, whether X, Y or Z, whether science, geography, history, whether Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, say something which is also mentioned in the Quran, it becomes the first for you to follow. If it says something which is not mentioned in the Quran and does not go against the Quran, you can follow it, muba, optional. But if it says something which is against the Quran, it is haram, it is prohibited. Three different strategies, three different ways. Regarding a question, Islam believes in Tawheed, five times Salah. Does it believe in Anwar Haq? Anwar Haq becoming one with God, it is shirk. It is against Tawheed. You can't say I believe in Tawheed and you believe in more than one God. You believe in Tawheed and saying, I will become one with God, it is opposite. So anyone who believes in that becoming one with God, he cannot be a follower of Tawheed. He cannot be Mohaid. It's two opposite things. But other things which matches with the Quran, no problem. Which doesn't go against the Quran, no problem. Hope that answers the question.